I want to do a study today on why are devil-possessed people obsessed with men of God. Turn in your King James Bible to Mark chapter 5. Opinions, preferences, feelings, and likes don't matter. It's what does the Scripture say. That's what being a Bible-believing Christian is all about. It's not about church traditions or denominational rules or catechisms or books of discipline or whatever else. What does the Bible say? And the Bible, when you study it, shows that there are devil-possessed people. They have a spirit of an, an evil spirit in them, called in the King James Bible a devil. The Greek word would be demon. A lot of the new versions that say demon-possessed, it's just they're transliterating. They're not translating the word. Devil's the right word. But you'll see throughout the scriptures that people that have devils within them are not afraid of the Lord. In fact, they're running to the Lord. They're worshiping Jesus Christ. Hmm. I'm going to show you. Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. And there came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Excuse me. And when he was come out of the ship, speaking about Jesus, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Let me just stop there for a minute. As we're entering towards the Halloween season, you're going to see people that love death. They'll decorate their homes with all kinds of skeletons and all kinds of morbid, hard things and whatever. Um, it's kind of like they have their dwelling among tombs. They'll actually put graves out, little fake graves out in their front yard. And hands coming up out and all this stuff. Why? Devils. Normal people don't celebrate death like that. Normal people have a lost one that dies and it grieves them. They don't think it's fun or neat or, oh, I love this time period. Devil possession. Um, and notice to it, no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Freakish strength. Uh, they got these power teams that go around the charismatic churches and, oh, this guy, he's not even that big and he, he can rip phone books in half. He can break chains. Yeah, gee, I wonder where that came from. Um, yeah, I remember actually reading the story of one of these guys one time, one of these power team guys, and he said about how that he was just too small and he couldn't do things and he just kept praying for the spirit to help him and, and everything else. And he said, all of a sudden one day, he said, I felt different. And he said, he arm wrestled this, this, this big uh, other guy that was on the power team. And, and he said, he just about broke the guy's arm. And the other guy just kind of looked at him weird and and now the guy, he's, just, he's not even that big of a guy, but he can rip phone books in half with his bare hands. What happened? The devil came into him. So not a charismatic. They're Christians. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Verse 4, Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. An untamable spirit there. There's a lot of people out there that are like that today. You can't reason with them. You can't talk to them. Won't mention any names. Verse 5. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. Saw at a grocery store here locally some young girl at the cash register. And uh, she usually wears a long sleeve shirt. But uh, the one time we were in there she had a short sleeve shirt on. Her forearms were covered with scars cutting herself. I've seen it a couple times now. There was another time we were at a used clothing store up in Presque Isle, and uh, there was a young woman there. Scars, scars all over her forearms, just cutting herself and cutting herself and cutting herself. What's going on? It's called devils. Devil possession. And I'll be talking more about some of the experiences I've had with devil-possessed people as we continue. They cut themselves, and, they, and there's excessive crying You'll see that with uh, some of these preachers out there. You know, they'll be preaching and they'll pull a Paul Washer, you know, that guy. And, and just preaching, I have such a burden for people. <laughs> it's, it, what in the world? Yeah, and they're just crying. It's like, these, like a little girl, you know, trying to get her way or something like that. Excessive crying. It's not natural. But look at this, verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran the other way because he was afraid. No. He uh, ran and worshipped him. 
I've talked about this in other studies, but I just need to say it again. Um, devil possessed people, uh, they worship Jesus. Um, you say, well, where could I see this thing happen? Oh, pick pretty much any church building out there, whatever flavor, whatever type. They worship Jesus. We'll see that throughout this study. They don't hide. They aren't scared. They don't run off and... Oh. They run towards Jesus. Verse 7, And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he, had, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. How many devils are out there? How many can somebody have in them? I don't know. A whole lot. The more you get in, involved in the occult and whatever else, and the more you mess around with the, the sinful, wicked stuff of this world, you can get all kinds of devils in you. A lot of them. But notice there. Thou Son of the Most High God. Jesus, Thou Son of the Most High God. Now, if some you go to some church building and somebody stands up and says, Oh, you know, right in a worship service, let's all raise our hands and say that Jesus is the Son of the Most High God. Would people say, Hey, that person's possessed with devils. Or would they say, Praise the Lord, what a good Christian. You see? So it's not just a profession. I'm a Christian. Don't worry about it. Jesus, I believe Jesus is the Son of the Most High God. Yeah, so do devils. It takes a little bit more than that. You know? To convince me that somebody's saved. Oh, you got a good uh, profession of faith there, but uh, let's look at some other things here. Let's compare what you're doing in your life with the Scriptures. Hmm. Verse 10, And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. There were certain you know, devils that liked to be in that area, in other words. They liked the country there. There's a lot of American devils out there. They don't want to leave America. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. 2,000 devils in one man? Ooh. A <laughs> few problems there. And were choked in the sea. So in other words, the devils came out and got into 2,000 swine there, but, you know, that's a lot of pigs to lose there. Hard for the farmers. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. Hey, just all these devils just came out and they got into the pigs and they ran down there and, and died and everything. You got to see this. Look at this. Verse 15. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were glad. And they were so happy that Jesus was able to help this poor guy. No, it says they were afraid. Isn't that weird? You know, that is one of the most amazing things about the lost world. You see some guy walking by and he's got these huge big rings in his ears. He's got things in his nose. He's got rings up here and things like this. Tattoos all over the place and everything else. And it's all, oh, hi, how are you doing today? You know, the lost world's a, oh, okay, yeah, hi. You know, Christian walks by holding a King James Bible. What's that over there? Uh. Remember, my, my wife and I went to an airport the one time. We were waiting for in-laws to come in and stuff. And, and I remember we were sitting there and, and had a Bible. And there was like a McDonald's inside the airport, you know. And we were sitting there at the one table. We didn't get anything to eat. And we're sitting there. And this McDonald's employee, she's walking back and forth. And she's looking at us, you know. And she's walking. And she's watching us, you know. <gasps> we're reading a Bible in the, in the airport. <gasps> oh, what could come of it, you know. And next thing you know, you know, she goes back and she's, you know, on the, the thing and, and this security goon comes up and he's standing there, you know, doing this or this military thing, you know, when you're standing there watching us, you know, look out, it's a Bible. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, you'd think that the people would come and they'd see the guy that was, that they used to be trying to bind with chains and he lives in the tombs and he's running around naked and he's cutting himself and crying. Do you think that they'd be afraid of that? But no, they're afraid of him now that he's saved. Saved in the sense of what it was going on back then. Understand that. He's cleaned up his life. 
Oh, and uh, I'd like to make a point there, by the way, too. Um, they, came, they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. There was a change in his life. The guy wasn't standing there going, <laughs> cutting himself. <laughs> I'm a Christian now. <laughs> you know. Binding him with chains and he's breaking them and things. I gotta get back to the tombs. I'm so glad I believe in Jesus. That's all it takes just to believe in Jesus. I didn't have to pray a prayer or anything. I just I don't have to have a changed life. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. You get saved, Jesus changes your life. And it makes people afraid. And that's why the enemies of this ministry hate this ministry so much. Because the things that I preach convict them of their sin. And it makes them afraid. Yep. <laughs> Verse 16. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. Yeah, you, you helped this guy out. You just took away a major problem. Jesus, could you please get out? Okay, I, I know that you meant well, but we, we just, we're going to have to ask you to leave now, okay? Uh, hey, we just saw you tracting here. Uh, please stop that, okay? We, want, we don't want you taking people away from getting the alcohol, putting gospel tracts into the alcohol, you know? Please don't do that anymore, okay? We, we don't want you to stop drunkenness and perversion and whatever else by getting rid of the alcohol. You know, people getting, say it this way, people going and buying alcohol and you put a tract in there and they actually get saved and stop drinking. Well, we don't want that. We want the alcoholics and the, and the broken families and everything else. Christians, though, it, we're going to have to ask you to leave the store now. Not much has changed. Could you please stop putting those tracks on those vehicles? Could you please stop that? We're going to have to ask you to leave. I'm trying to clean people's lives up. Lower crime. Lower all kinds of other problems. Don't you want that? Oh, we'd rather not. We'd rather deal with the devil-possessed people. Mm-hmm. Verse 18, And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great his belief in Jesus was. Noah, um, how great things the Lord had done, excuse me, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. That's called a testimony. A testimony of a changed life. Which I've been preaching for years and years and years and I get these devil-possessed people saying that I'm preaching work salvation. I've never preached work salvation. Never. I preach what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Like the old hymn says. And I didn't write the hymn, okay? <laughs> And the guy, the, the one that wrote the hymn, not even sure who it was that wrote it. I have to look it up. But whoever wrote that hymn was not a Denlingerite. They're singing about the truth of when you get saved. When you get born again, there's a change. And you go, t you go tell about it and people marvel. Wow. Really? You're not the drunkard that I once knew. You're not the pervert that I once knew. You're not the this or that. You're not the drug addict. How did you get away from all that stuff? Jesus changed my life when I got saved. Hmm. Luke chapter 4. Go over to there. Luke chapter 4. Verse 33. And in the synagogue there was a man with which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. What he meant was the Holy Three of God, you know, there's because there's three different persons. There. I had to put that in. More on that in another study. But uh, very interesting. Notice it says there, in the synagogue there was a man which had an unclean, a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. You know what's very interesting about that? 
Devil possessed people will go and they'll run up to you if you're saved and they'll try to they'll try to say things, which we're gonna see here as the study continues. But what do they really want? Let us alone. Don't come in here and bug us with what? Your profession of faith? Uh uh. With your standards that line up with scripture. You see, devil possessed people, their most important thing is damage control. And some preacher comes out and says, hey, you know what? It's an abomination to watch television. How dare you watch television? These sports programs and things like that, it's all about money. It's fake. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. It's a spirit of competition. It's pride. It's this. The devil possessed person says, I can't have this thing spreading. I have to stop this. I have to make videos and things and come out and attack what this preacher, this man of God has said. Hey, you shouldn't be getting drunk. Hey, you shouldn't be looking at this. Hey, you shouldn't be dressing that way. Hey, you shouldn't be eating that stuff. And you shouldn't... The devil possessed people, they just have to... They just... Let us alone. Let us alone. Don't preach against our sins. I have a profession of faith. I'm a Christian. But you, you have, have all these standards. I don't care if they're in the Bible or not. They know that they are. You're making all these standards on us. How dare you do that? Let us alone. Don't bother us. Verse 35, And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house, and Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. She wasn't much of a feminist, I guess, apparently. You know, oh, you're in my house. Hey, I'll cook a meal for you here. Let me take care of you. Thanks for healing me. <laughs> had to put that in. Verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, suffer, he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Again, they're worshiping the Lord. They're proclaiming truth. You know, there's a lot of devil-possessed people out there, and they uh, proclaim a lot of truth. Hmm. Very interesting. You say, well, that's Jesus. Of course, you know, Jesus was obviously a man of God. He is. The God-man, you know, he's God manifest in the flesh. What about a Christian? Acts chapter 16. Go there in your King James Bible. Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by sooth saying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Did she say anything bad? No, she didn't. Was she making fun of them? No. Was she saying honorable things? Yes. And Paul said, well, you know, hey, doesn't matter who says it, you know, as long as it's the truth. I don't care, you know, whatever type of deal, it's, it's okay, you know, fine. No, that's not what he said. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Hmm. Why was she following him around? I mean... Why not just, you know, oh, there's Paul and Silas, you know, Paul and, and you know, some of the disciples there and think, whoa, whoa, I better get out of here. She was obsessed. When you get into making any kind of Christian videos, just putting your testimony out, just being, just innocently trying to talk to people about whatever, all of a sudden you're going to see these little devil-possessed trolls just flock to your channel and they're going to be making little videos about every little thing that you say and they're going to hang on every word that you speak. 
and you slip up or say anything at all, and they will take your words and they will twist and, and make you into some kind of heretic, and, you, and you're going to watch. That's not at all what I was saying. Why? Damage control. They want to be left alone. The devil-possessed people want to do whatever they feel like doing. They don't want to have any conviction of their sin. They don't want some stinking Christian being around. That's why they go to the nightclubs. That's why they go to the bars. That's why they go to church. You say, did you say church? Yes, I said church. C-H-U-R-C-H. Church. Put whatever label in front of that you, th that you want. Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, Lutheran, Catholic, whatever. Those people want to live in their dirty sins. You don't have to repent of sin to be saved. They don't have to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've been over the whole repent of sin thing before in other studies. I've talked about what that means. you know. But these people, they want to be let alone. They don't want some Christian coming in there and saying, you know, uh, actually, those Hollywood movies are, are wicked and, and you really shouldn't have a television. And, and you know that stuff you're, you're drinking there, that soda pop, oh, that stuff's really bad for you. You really shouldn't be drinking that stuff. And You know, there's, there's new versions over there. You really should burn them things. They're, they're from the Vatican. Now, speaking of Vatican, what a killjoy. Mm -hmm. They want to be left alone. And some Christian coming along, a true born-again Christian, just makes their skin crawl. Yeah. One more place to turn to. Ephesians chapter 6. What did Paul do when that woman, that young woman came up and she was saying all those things? He rebuked the devil in her. Does it say that uh, he witnessed to her? No. Um, she became a member of a good New Testament local Baptist church? No. He rebuked the Spirit. Um, you know, casting out devils, I believe, is one of the sign gifts that was given to the apostles and things, but I think that we can rebuke devils. I think we can rebuke devil spirits, certainly. Uh, I don't think that there's anything unscriptural about that. Um, this is what we have to remember. Paul didn't go up to that woman and say, hey, you're saying you're, you're just a devil-possessed nut, and he just took his fist and just punched her and knocked her out. He didn't do that. He rebuked the spirit within her. Why? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Our fight is spiritual in nature. These people that come and they just, they just, they're obsessed with men of God. They're obsessed with ministries and things. And I've seen it for years and years and years. I know there are a lot of people that don't like the fact that God uses me, that God speaks through me and things, and I'm a man of God. And I don't hold that title as some kind of special magical title you don't dare speak against the man of God. I get corrected all the time and I appreciate that. From truly saved brethren. <laughs> okay. Uh, heretics trying to correct me. Devil possessed people. You don't, don't try to correct me. It's not going to work. Um, but I appreciate my brethren saying, hey, you know, you I heard you saying this. You might want to stop doing that. And it, you said this in your study, but I, does the Bible say that? That's fine. Absolutely. But these devils are obsessed with this ministry. You've seen it for years and years and years. I have never known anybody that did private videos on a separate website, Patreon, and the devil-possessed people actually snuck in just to make problems. And they're stealing my videos and putting them on YouTube and all this. I, I've never heard anybody say that. I've heard of Patreon shutting people down because of you know, freedom of speech issues and whatever. But I've never heard of people's channels being infiltrated. So, you know, what does that prove? It proves that God uses me and the devil-possessed people are obsessed with this ministry. Uh, there's a lot of people who, who, who just thrive on trying to find anything that they can on us. They, they, their greatest desire in life is to see me shut down. Why? Because they want to be left alone. They want a nice little pocket preacher that won't preach against their sins. 
one that they feel comfortable listening to. Possessed with devils, in other words. And it's the devils that we have to go after. Um, when Paul rebuked that young woman, like I said, he just said, you know, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you know, come at her, paraphrasing there. He didn't say anything about her. And that's the tricky part. That's the part, sometimes in my flesh, I get angry and I'll make fun of the person or whatever else. Um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Somebody attacks you on YouTube or out in, even out in public or whatever else. It's devil spirits that are there. And what are they trying to do? Trying to get you to leave them alone. They're trying to get you to be silent about sin. You see? So how do you keep that battle going? How do you keep fighting against that, that spiritual wickedness there? Keep preaching against sin. Keep preaching true salvation as found on the pages of this King James Bible. Don't compromise. I remember I uh, told the story different times, but I'll tell it another time for people that are new to the ministry here. Um, had a neighbor, drunken Catholic neighbor, and he was literally drunk in a couple of years I knew him. Uh, he was literally drunk almost the whole time. Every time he'd go over different times of the day, whenever, he'd be just drunk. All the days of the week, didn't matter. And I remember the one time we were back, we had a right-of-way going through his property. It's, we always had to drive past his place. And, uh, you know, went back in before he was up, and then we came back out. I mean, he was just sitting there literally out a bottle of alcohol, and he's just sitting there just drunk, and he's like, hey, how you doing, you know? And, and I got out and walked over, so trying to be a nice guy, trying to, you know, I had to talk to him about doing, you know, work on the lane and whatever else, so I walked over, and I was, yeah, how you doing, and, and everything, and, and he's, his speech is slurred and everything else, and I started, I think I said something about the Bible or something like that, and all of a sudden, he just stopped, and he went. He, I mean, he was—he could rarely even speak. He was just like that. And all of a sudden, he stops, and he puts his head down, and he just does this weird look at me, and he says, "I know who you are." Perfect, clear, clear speech. I know who you are. This growling type of voice, and he says, "You're a man of God." Like that. And I and I said, "Yeah." And, uh, and I, I forget exactly what happened. The subject got changed or whatever else and stuff. And I, and I, cause I'm thinking, I'm not going to witness to this guy, you know, and it just got, kind of caught me off guard. And I thought, what in the world? But I've seen that thing. I remember another time I was at a grocery store and I went in and, and, uh, there's this guy that's standing there and he's got, you know, his muscle shirt on and he's got tattoos all over his arms and they're all six, six, six upside down, you know, inverted cross and openly blatantly satanic symbols. I didn't try to go up to the guy, witness to him or anything. I just walked up. There was something I needed beside him. Not, you know, real close to him, but, you know, about four or five feet away. And as soon as I got right there and I turned like this, I look, he looks, he kind of looked over like this and he went, and, and, you know, and got out of there. And I thought, you know, this guy could have beat me up easily. I mean, it was huge. And I, he went around, I, you know, okay, he went up to some other aisle, whatever. I came around the other aisle and he was coming down towards me he literally stopped and turned around and, and almost ran away weird and that was before i was you know i just brand new christian i was i wasn't even saved that long uh why because they want to be left alone so um don't get discouraged when you are a bible believing christian you're going to find people that stalk you and uh, they become obsessed with you. They watch everything that you do and they, they, they look for any little mistake that you make and try to magnify it and whatever else. They're possessed with devils. Uh, I remember a certain devil uh, that I used to do live streams with. And I remember um, he would he'd sit there and he'd do this weird thing with his hair. And I remember Peter Ruckman talking about that years ago. He said that he saw some woman which was possessed with devils out of Baptist church. And, and she would just play with her hair. You know, and it doesn't make sense, you know, when they're doing it. Um, there's a lot of weird little things like that. Uh, just strange. Of course, of course, the devils that are out there, the obsessed devils, are going to tell 
people what I've said and everything else. You're getting every little thing, aren't you? Make a live stream video. You got to do a live stream on this now. You got to make sure that you get out there. You got to do a video on this thing. You got to no stone unturned. You got to make sure you, you, you listen to every little word I speak, don't you? Don't you? You know, the devil that's in you right now, to those out there that are obsessed with me, those devils are blinding your eyes so that you'll end up in hell thinking that you're going to go to heaven. You think that because you worship Jesus Christ, because you have a profession of faith, you think that you're going to go to heaven when you die. You're not going to heaven. If you're an enemy of this ministry, and you say, yeah, you know, Denlinger's a nut, he's a this, okay, stop watching. But if there's something in you that just makes you obsessed, and you have to see every little thing I do, you're possessed. You have devils in you. And I don't know your exact situation. I can't be there to rebuke the devil and say, come out of them in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think that you can cast the devil out of somebody that doesn't want it out. Because some of the stuff that was going on there with Jesus and things like that, I mean, he's God manifest in the flesh. You know? But you get people, I think, I think right now, you know, having devils cast out of you means you get saved. Okay? Just kind of the Lord moves in and cleans up everything and gets them all out of there. You don't have to get saved and then go to some charismatic nut healer or whatever else and have the devils, you know, let's have the, the counseling session and just have the devils come out one by one, you know, just kind of uh, form a line and, you know, we'll take a number or whatever and each one comes out, you know, and leaves the door. <laughs> no, you just get born again and the Holy Spirit comes in and the, and the devils go, ah, and get out of there. You know, it's a new birth. You become part of, you know, the, the body of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good connection to God there, you know. <laughs> so... Uh, as you grow in the faith, um, you're going to see that. That there are some people that uh, they want you to leave them alone. Uh, they don't want you there with, with your standards and your, your King James Bible. Makes them nervous. Um, you can't compromise. You, you can't go along with that stuff. And uh, so that, that's just going to be it. I just wanted to, to make that because, you know... I've been doing this thing for a long time, and a lot of you out there, you get newly saved or whatever else, and you think, well, Brian's doing this, and he's, you know, fighting these devils and whatever else, fighting all this heresy and false doctrine. I'm going to do the videos too. Well, praise the Lord for that. But uh, you don't know what it's like to be attacked. And all of a sudden, you get attacked and slammed hard and whatever else, and, and it can get pretty scary. Um, I'm telling you, it's a normal thing. Devil-possessed people are obsessed with men of God. And if you want to be a real man of God, uh, you're going to be attacked a lot. Okay? So, that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.